Welcome back to First Reaction for the summer 2021 season. Today we're taking a look at the case study of Vanitas, and the best way that I can describe this series is that I believe it contains a plot and characters that only Studio Bones can possibly handle. I'd more quickly summarize the series as Tumblr bait, but Tumblr ain't around anymore. Big rip to them. Fujoshi bait might work too as a descriptor, but I don't think the term is as widely used as it could be. So if you happen to understand either of those summaries, great, you know what to expect. If not, well, let's jam. So why does Vanitas seem to cater to that particular audience? If this series becomes popular, it'll be for the same reasons that Yuri on Ice got big, why Clamp was a staple for a very long time, and why many people have fond memories of Oran Host Club. Super pretty boys. Not only does Vanitas contain two super hot male leads, but there's also the wonderful vampire aesthetic. Our leads are also traveling around a steampunk version of Europe, saving other people from being corrupted, demon-like beings. So it doesn't need to be stated that I am not the targeted demographic for this. That said, historically many anime have been able to be entertaining outside of whatever demo they aim for, and since this is a Bone series, I figured I'd give it a glance and see what's up. In that sense, nothing about this series is particularly out of the ordinary. The charisma of our two leads absolutely carry the show, and the eccentricity of both of them help to add this layer of mystery to the setting that the show can choose to slowly peel away over the course of the narrative or not, and even if that is the case, I don't feel like the show would be any less off for it. For example, it should be noted that one of our mains, Vanitas himself, is not actually a vampire, so he claims, nor is he the original Vanitas. Story goes that while most vampires in this setting are created under the light of the Crimson Moon, Vanitas was created under the Blue Full Moon. For some reason, this led him to being ostracized by the original vampires, and he created a grimoire as revenge that has the special power to cure vampirism. Maybe. They're kind of fuzzy with that logic and the grimoire is a MacGuffin. But now, when the show takes place, the original Vanitas is long gone, and this human doctor has taken up the mantle with the grimoire in hand, dashing about saving people from having their true names corrupted by vampirism. It's slightly confusing, because in the initial episodes, Vanitas isn't curing vampirism per se, but rather a weird offshoot that turns people into mindless beasts, kind of like this universe's version of ghouls. He hasn't yet attempted to use the grimoire on normal vampires, which is why he claims that the grimoire is merely a tool, and the legends of it being cursed is simply because what it is capable of. It makes it something that vampire society can truly fear. I almost wish that the tone of the series was a bit more serious than it actually is. If you've watched other Bones shows in the past, Brotherhood for example, you know that they are very good at storyboarding out scenes that have our characters swap between their normal detailed character designs and more flat shibby versions for comedic effect. Here in Vanitas, the same is true, but the more bombastic nature of our leads seems to cause that to happen far more often than in the aforementioned Brotherhood. There is not, at least in the initial episodes, much gravitas in Vanitas. Now, that could just be to bring people in and then whack them over the head with a massively depressing plot later. And I'm not saying that Vanitas is bad at swapping between those comedic shibby moments and then back. But it's a situation where, as I read more and more about the setting, I keep finding myself getting further and further invested. But at times, the lack of seriousness from Vanitas himself as a character makes me feel like getting satisfying answers about the setting is going to be a slog. Of course then, to balance that, I find myself attaching far more to Vanitas's newly found compatriot vampire, Noe. Noe was sent to Paris by his teacher on a rumor that the cursed grimoire Vanitas had been spotted, only for him to run into this man with Vanitas's name. Now, Noe very much wants to know more about the grimoire and his thirst for knowledge is only matched at this moment by my own. So with luck, it'll drive the plot fast enough to keep things interesting. But again, I'm not the demographic, and what I'd like to see the show do is probably the near opposite of what it's actually gonna do. I just want to know more about the world. What are the limitations of vampires here? Sunlight doesn't seem to affect them, so do other typical vampire traits also disappear? If so, are they replaced by anything? What is the deal with the Hellfire Witch, or for that matter, the youthful vampire Luca who commands her? And kind of the biggest question I have is, what exactly is Vanitas's 
deal. He's extremely self-assured in almost everything he does. So what does he have up his sleeve to give him that level of confidence in a world that includes powerful vampires and who knows what else, if Jean is any indication? If he's not a vampire himself, then he's a mortal man who thought the best course of action during his introduction was to ride on top of a blimp and then dive through a giant glass window to capture his target. <laughs> like, he can't completely be human because, like, seriously, look at those arms. He might not be a vampire, but there's something up with him, and I'm interested to find out but only for the moment. It depends on how the rest of the show is paced. But will I be watching the series? For a time, yes. There is enough here for me to commit to another few episodes unless there is a major downturn, but I can't say I expect to be blown away by the rest of the series. Do I recommend it? Well, if you fit within the target demographic, then it'll probably be a highlight of the season for you. Otherwise, you'll need to be interested in the world like I am, or at the very least find the lead character's dynamic enjoyable enough not to watch something else. That's my take anyways. And of course, if you think the original material might be more your speed, because who knows what the adaptation has done with it, then you can pick it up digitally over on Bookwalker. And if you do so, feel free to punch in my coupon code. That'll work on your first purchase. Taking off a good 600 yen. Or don't. That's up to you. Either way, that is all I have for today. Tune in next time where we look at one isekai? Multiple isekai? We're gonna figure that out. You'll know by the time the video comes out. Hopefully something in there will be worthwhile. There are a lot of isekai this season. But until then, that is all for today. A very big thank you to my patrons who make videos like this possible, and a very special thank you to patrons Omar Showman, Hector Montemayor, Rifen Bonaparte, City Yamako, and Wago221 for being especially awesome. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, Watch more anime and stay frosty.